Okay. The number one piece of advice that I've gotten that I learned at a very young age came from my coach at the University of Florida, Pete Alonzo, Jonathan India, two studs, they can speak to this too. It's you gotta go to the plate looking for what you're gonna get, not what you wanna see. Mm. So with that said, when I see these numbers, they're all good, but I don't wanna be in a position where I'm getting stuff by accident. A pitcher misses his spot, he happens okay. to go to a fastball, he happens to go to a pitch. I want to go to play looking for what I want for what I'm gonna get. And what I'm gonna get with Justin Verlander is a top of his own fastball and a slider off of it. So instead of looking for pitches, I'm more looking for zones or maybe where the ball is starting. Things so like that. So Austin Riley came on here and he says he hunts windows. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Really? Yeah. Windows it like uh, release point, um, also where you want a ball to start, especially if you're looking for a slider or a curveball. Because training like the ball that starts at you are the good sliders and curveballs as opposed to the ones that kind of stay with the hand yeah. and then are like chase pitches, you know? Yeah. So these numbers are definitely important, but at the end of the day, I mean, what if a pitcher just decides to throw you seven straight sliders? I love it. You know? I just want, I kind of want to show people at home that to be oh, he's exactly to, the same. He's exactly no, the he same. You know, usually Which is guys have to change what they do at a Which later age. No, it's amazing. It is. All right, we're going to keep going. Here we go. We can dive so in So this more. is, you talk about high fastball, 2022, top of the zone. So are you looking up there when you're facing him? Every every plan changes from pitcher to pitcher. But yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm trying to make the pitcher's plan my plan. Yeah. You know, I have enough confidence in baseball, you know, and that, and that might not mean. Pause know, this. That might not mean go up there and taking your A's swing or taking the swing where you feel comfortable, you can kind of let it eat a little bit. If a pitcher's plan is top of the zone with like a really good curveball and slider, you gotta have a B swing, even maybe even a C swing. Take your single, you know? Work him eight, eight, nine pitches. I need a clean frame on that, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Things like that. Yeah. It just, it, it, it depends. But I'm looking where he's throwing the ball. I love it. All right, so bring up the board. S-Rod, percentage of uh, fastballs three feet or higher. Look at this. He's continued to climb the ladder as he's gotten older. Again, something like 2018, 38% of the time he was sitting at the top of the zone. Now 2022, I mean 51% of his heaters are three feet or higher. Well, he knows that he knows they look good as a hitter. Yeah. You know, the ball that's close to your eyes right there, it looks good. It takes a lot of discipline to lay off those, especially if you're throwing his nasty sliders and curveballs off of that. It's, it's so tough funny to... because for me, it was the complete opposite. That pitch, because I loaded my hands down, I wasn't a guy that went back. So when I loaded them down, I liked the ball down. Yeah. So that to me was a, I was giving up on that right out of his well, hand. Yeah. And that, and again, that comes, that just comes down to the fact of knowing yourself, which is really important as a hitter. You got to yeah. know what type of hitter you are. If you feel comfortable looking at the top of the zone, you can just shoot your hands across your body and take that, that's you. If it's if you're a guy, you're a low ball hitter, that's what you need to know going into the approach, you know? Awesome stuff. All right, heat map me real quick, and then we're gonna get into why the Phillies actually are a tough matchup for JV. So in 2019, this is from the catcher's perspective back here. I wanna know too. You no, know, kind of middle of the middle of the middle of the plate, and then 2022, most of his heaters, like we said, the 51% are at the top of the zone. But news flash. You know who hits high heaters? The Phillies. Show me Schwarber, because he can get to a high piece of cheese with the best of them. Here's Walker Bueller, got him, 95 top of the zone. <laughs> Wait till you see this Johnny Cueto, and I know he's in a Nats uniform, but this is so disgusting <laughs> that I had to show it. How does he hit oh. that? <laughs> Run that back, please. <laughs> it's a pitch out. He's choked out, that's a short swing, look at that. <laughs> That's at his neck. Wow. Yeah, it is. He's been doing that since college. We played him when he was against Indiana. He's He's been raking since. Hey, we're going to bring up later when we do a skybox of your swing, some of your college video, too. We, uh -oh. dove, we dove in. <laughs> you guys Real, went deep. We went deep. <laughs> Real Muto, another guy, top of the zone. Gene Segura, another guy, top of the zone. Okay, pause this real quick. Just bring up the board on the Phillies so people at home understand. Hey, this is a tough matchup for JV. Look at this. Phillies versus fastballs, three feet or higher. They're first in all of baseball. Slug first. So, JV, you might see a ton of curveball slider tonight out of him. Because he's got to look at this stuff. Okay. He so, does. He, he looks, no, he does. Of course he does. So, you got four seam heater top of the zone, nasty breaking ball. Bring up the board on Harrison Bader that when he walked in, he didn't know 
this. And this is would be the only thing I'd walk up to you and be like, hey, dude, do you know that you, you see the mo third most breaking balls in the entire sport? You and did you, say that. And you didn't know that. No. Not that. I mean, not, not that much. <laughs> but what I tell you, though, like, I understand, you know? Pitcher's yeah. job is to get but the But what are they up. giving you? Well, it doesn't help sometimes. What are the when, Yankees analytics people handing you? No, okay. The Yankees gave me everything I needed. It's just whether or not I chose to look at it. To get, you know, to game Did plan. Did you study for exams in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> that would require me having to go to class exactly. first. Hey. Let's go into the AB. <laughs> Show him the AB real quick. <clears throat> get out. This is Verlander. So he throws you nothing. First off, timeout. Mouth, what please. are you chewing on? <laughs> What is in your mouth? Okay, people, people in the space, okay, the the mouthpiece. There's 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 terminology. There's mouthpiece. There's brace plate. There's bite guard. Okay, this is a it's a bite guard. All right. Looks like you're getting ready to have root canal. <laughs> the origin is super simple. You want to hear real quick? Take the pressure off your cheekbones. Yeah. Okay. So listen. So I was watching video. End of the season, regular season. We got four or five days before the Guardians roll into town, right? Yeah. I'm watching video, some things felt good, some things didn't feel good, going through the process. As I'm watching the video from the sides and different cameras, I'm noticing as I'm going to the baseball, my hands are tightening up, my forearm muscles are ripping. Your jaws tight, clenched. jaws clenched before the ball is coming to the plate. Had a conversation with you know a mental guy that I've always had and rely on heavily from St. Louis. Um, Basically, a light bulb went off. I've done a lot of work with, with mouth guards in the past. I've been hooked up to machines. The output when your jaw is relaxed, stuff really? like that. It is, yeah. For whatever reason, as an athlete, I would underbite when I'm getting tense. I would underbite, and it, put, it puts you in a very stressful position. Light bulb goes off. I work with this company, had you know some of these mouth guards on tap. You think this helps you? Molded one, game one, yeah. When my first at bat, I just felt relaxed. Really? A lot of it too. It's a, it's like a fidget tool too. You know, I mean, it's you like, are getting after it. I, I watch am, yeah. you. I, I'm I'm fixated on what everybody's doing. Yeah, no. It's, Some people can. I, yeah. You're like, mm, yeah. yeah. You're on. Because I'm, I'm ready. Like you're at a I'm, rave or something. <laughs> <laughs> Get into that bat right here. Okay. We got breaking balls coming at you. So Justin Verlander right here starts you off breaking ball strike one. So take me through your thought process. You want a fastball right here? I want a, You want a fastball every pitch. Um, okay, that's dirty pitch. Yeah, so that was a good one. That was a good one. Slider down away. You saw that really good. Saw good. And this kind of rolls Play. in there, but that was a good swing. That was a great swing. So yeah, yeah all right, but you you you're not stepping out of the box two two right there, going, all right, I'm still on fastball. I'm going to work the fastball to right center. Uh, he hangs me something. I'm gonna take him. No, on the train so tracks. no, so um, you know the biggest the biggest thing for me with, with every pitcher is to find the release point. Um, so understanding Verlander's like you know you said Austin Riley talks about tunnels. Just finding the release point. I kind of felt to the at bat that like you know you have to always stand the fastball and respect it. But um, that swing right there was a defensive swing in terms of I need to. This guy's ball stuff play. is nasty. Yeah. He's going, you know, away with the slider. He's going to it. But, you know, <clears> if this ball comes in the zone, I'm going to be in a very, like, comfortable position to just put the ball in play. Um, oops, and listen, he's oops, got... I went deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, like, it's just more like, you know, as the at-bat progresses, your movements get smaller. With a guy that that's nasty, I'm not going to take my, like, relax, rock, like, rhythm, just like, you know, you just can't do it because this stuff is too good. You have to respect his stuff. He's got the fast at the top of the zone he can put you away with. He's got the curb on side underneath it. And a lot of those pitches that I saw for, that I took were just because I saw them well because my movements were smaller in the box. Got to a position where he just happened to leave one more over the plate and I put a good swing on it. Guys like, you know, where you just feel more comfortable, you can kind of just like, you know, you can kind of swag it out a little bit. Like, yeah. you no, know, if this ball is going to be over the white fast bar slider, it's going to get whacked. That's not, the, that's not the approach with him at all. You know, you have Almost to Almost like a two-strike approach. Yeah, two strike in the sense that I'm not going to strike out. If I'm going to get out, it's because I'm going to put the ball in play. I'm going to swing on good pitches. I'm going to make him come in the zone. That's my two strike approach. Yeah. Two strike approach doesn't have to be I'm going to shoot the ball the other way. You know, I'm going to choke up and just like, you know, just yeah. give myself up. No, it's just the movements get smaller. The focus gets more intense. And the area you're looking for the ball closer to me, you know, I saw he was working away, working away, working away. 
And just classically, you know, he doesn't throw the ball in. He definitely doesn't throw the ball down and in with his fastball. So, like, you, when you can eliminate certain areas, Zones, right. you look for, you know, where he's trying to go. And I will say, though, the next at bat, and we talked about this. He threw you a heater in. He handled me. <laughs> he handled me. He handled me. He changed it up. He changed it up. Which All is right. why he's had so much success, because he's, although the numbers don't necessarily reflect it, he's adjustable in the sense of he knows where he can put the baseball.